All right, guys. Today I was going to talk to you a little bit about how I feed my fish. You know, that's a pretty important thing, obviously. And I've come to the conclusion that every tank and all its inhabitants develop a different feeding regime. So there's certain fish, obviously, that need to be fed a certain way. I found that my fox face and my tang compete for algae in the tank. So I'm always keeping some nori on here. And this usually goes in one day. They both enjoy it. They both eat it at the same time. But what I'm noticing is that my fox face is quite a bit larger and thicker than my tang. Now, species specific, the fox face is a thicker fish, but the tang looks healthy. It's got good color. So the way I'm feeding now is I feed my 75 gallon, which has the clownfish, four of the blue-green chromis, it's got the it's got the pajama cardinal it's got this guy down here he doesn't eat the too much of the fare that comes into the tank blue spotted goby in there who rarely comes out now but he's still alive i see him around he eats off the bottom oh and i have a citron goby in there so what i feed them is selcon soaked sustainable aquatic slow sinking pellet food and they're really absorbent so I can put about 10 drops of Celcon in there and it soaks it up and that gives them a lot of vitamins B12 and C in the Celcon. This is San Francisco Bay mixed marine cuisine so it's got quite a few of everything and the way I do it you may think that's not a lot yet I run quite a high phosphate level in my tank which means I'm feeding a lot considering the phosphate level. It's got to come down to what your fish are requiring. So what I do is I look at the fish's health week to week, month to month. You know, if you start seeing a fish with the bottom part of the belly looking kind of thin, but in my 20, I have the lawnmower Blenny in here and his gut is starting to look semi-thin and concaved a little bit, which tells me he's not getting enough algae off the rocks and glass. It's not regrowing quickly enough. So it's a difficult fish to keep in 20 gallons. You need a lot of microalgae to keep that fish in there. So I may have to start feeding this tank a little bit more with some meaty foods. You know, a lot of the things you read, feed your fish what they can eat in three minutes of time. That can be a lot of food in three minutes, you know, or too much food. So I opt on the minimal amount I feed once a day and I feed what I feel is a minimal amount. I don't like a lot of the food to get left behind or to go over the overflow and get stuck in the sponges in there. I like the fish to consume it all, but sometimes you may notice over time that that's not enough food, but you have to go by what the fish gut looks like. Now, if I wanted to determine whether my mandarin was getting enough food, I would look at his body, his stomach. This angle here, it's hard to see, but I probably have something else where you can see. His stomach is nice and rounded and fat, so he's getting enough whether the slow sinking pellets are getting down to the bottom or and whether he has enough pods to eat. You can see the yellow tang here has great color. He doesn't have lateral line and he does have a thickness to him. He's not thin by any means. He's got a good size to him. These particular slow sinking pellets are used by sustainable aquatics to raise their fish. So I know they have a good quality protein in them to do a great job on keeping good coloration in your fish. And that's another thing. You know, if your fish don't look as colorful as they did when you first got them, you may not be giving them a, not so much enough food, but the right kinds of food. I toned the light down on the refugium 
And I've also took out a lot of the bryopsis and hair and added in some old chatomorpha in there. So this has already grown. In a matter of days, the ball went from not quite doubled, but it's grown quite a bit within the last week or so since it's been in here. And this red grass area is doing well. I keep it clipped up on the top. And the 10 gallon is looking okay. 10 gallon needs to be clean, obviously, the glass. Uh, I have a lot of the red grassalaria growing up in here. It really grows fast. And I also notice that my emerald crab likes to eat it. In my experience, the emerald crabs were quite hard to keep. They always seem to die on me because I believe they just weren't eating enough food. He's been in there three to six months now. He's doing okay. I think what I'm going to do is take out the tuxedo urchin it's really stripped my rocks down. There's no coralline algae on any of my rocks anymore, so I may bring him to Fish Guy Mike. Coral growth is looking good on this. And I also feed this mastic. It came from, where did I get this from? Where did I get this from? Uh, I'm not giving them any free promotion. They come in balls and it's kind of mushy and I stick a little, like I roll a little ball up and it sinks really fast. The hermits, the hermits and the emerald crab love it. He comes out. So I do that maybe once a week in here. Absolutely. Look at him. He's coming for food. <laughs> <laughs> 